what do you think is the main ideological battle line today in the world, if there is such a thing anymore? That's the problem. Although today, at the level of power politics, new geopolitical blocks are appearing, but it's strange how they often violate all the old official lines of opposition or of division. Uh, within the so-called developed countries themselves, of course, the opposition is now no longer between. We all remember the good old times when there was moderate left, moderate right, and then some centrist, some excessive, but the basic formula was Christian or conservative Democrats and social Democrats or socialists, and they exchange each other. As you, Yuval, wrote in one of your books, and this is, I think, I often quote you here a very important lesson, in contrast to this open plural stupidity that democracy means diversity, no, no, it means diversity, but based on a set of shared values. And by this, I don't mean so much explicit positive values as something that may appear unimportant, but it's absolutely crucial today. These often unwritten procedural rules. Do you remember, for example, Bush versus Al Gore? Mm -hmm. It was all about uh, a couple of hundred votes in Florida. It was all contested, but nonetheless, the moment the Supreme Court, or I don't know who has spoken, all sides accepted it. Yeah. This is now gradually disappearing. And I don't understand why. I mean, I, I think that the United States may really be on the verge of civil war. Yeah. I think that people, Americans now hate each other and fear each other more than they hate and fear anybody else on the planet. And I don't understand why, because from, you know, I, I know the main bones, um, um, the main subject of controversy, whether it's abortion, whether it's gun control, yeah. but from a, 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 a grand historical perspective, it doesn't seem good enough reasons to destroy Western civilization about. I mean, they seem to be the, so in, in agreement about supposedly all the important things, I don't understand what is really fueling the levels of hatred and fear and animosity uh, in, in the United States, in the Western world, in, in the world as a whole. I agree with you, and, but the problem I see is that this so-called civil war in the United States, and this makes it even more enigmatic in your sense, is that Maybe I'm an old-fashioned leftist here, but I think it's basically a false conflict. Mm -hmm. False conflict in the sense that, on the one hand, we have whatever we call it, uh, alt-right, this new populist, openly racist, more or less openly racist stands for liberty. And uh, just to make, uh, to support your point about civil war, you know, this is what I mean by this strange reversal of roles. I remember when me and my friends, we were watching uh, January 6, 2021. Mm -hmm. Do you know that many of my leftist friends cried? They said, people penetrating the seat of power, we left should be doing this. <laughs> Where are we? Exactly what happened yeah. is, you know, the, the, the Conservative Party yeah. is supporting the storming of the Bastille. Yeah. And the Progressive Party is now the party of institutions and traditions. And calling sometimes even for more police presence in some countries. It's mm -hmm. more complex, I know. So uh, uh, the problem, uh, the problem I see is that this opposition is false. Why? Because we have populist right, which goes pretty far now. And this really... Yeah, it's no longer conservative. I mean, they're yeah, no longer yeah, a conservative yeah, yeah. party. And we can see this in a series of small signs, which I think cause nightmare to me. Mm -hmm. First, you have now more and more Republican states which proclaim publicly, this is not what men talk in a bar after a meeting, that Biden is not a legitimate 
president. Mm -hmm. They are now already getting ready for next elections, which is extremely dangerous, what? Uh, because they want now to impose this regulation that if there is something not clear in the electoral result, the, the, the uh, state, state Congress, Congress can yeah. directly nominate them. Mm -hmm. This is, this is yeah. approaching, the, approaching the end. But what I'm saying is that, you know what is missing here? I wonder if you would agree. The old normal distinction between left and right, because we had attempts, Bernie Sanders and so on, but unfortunately they were swallowed by something that I call the politically correct Me Too left liberal mainstream, mm -hmm. which I oppose, not in the sense of they are too extremists and so on, but this is pseudo-extremism, I think. I think that some Me Too tendencies, you know, which work like this, you say, it's much more cruel than usual legal accusation. In legal accusation, I accuse you of something. You can defend yourself. You, we go to the court, we find a compromise here. No, it's cancel culture. You are simply out. But, but, I, yeah, but I think this is a pseudo-leftist radicalism. I think, this may surprise you, as an old Marxist, I will quote, uh, although I'm more Hegelian now than Marx, I will quote Communist Manifesto, where Marx writes those famous lines with capitalism, all old patriarchal, hierarchic relations melt into thinker, everything gets dynamic. This process is now reaching a level unthinkable for Marx, even sexual identity, what you consider natural and so on. Mm -hmm. Everything becomes a matter of possible personal choice or uh, technological manipulation. So uh, I think that this struggle, what we experience as civil, uh, cold still, ideological civil war, is strictly internal to the system.